This week, leaders in the Republican Party went up to that trial, stood outside the courthouse, and attacked our legal system. How does that make you feel about Republicans right now? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a, a, a terrible fault for our country to see people attacking our legal system. That's an enormous mistake. Uh, I think it's also demeaning for people to quite apparently uh, try and run for vice president by donning the red tie and standing outside the courthouse. That, it's just, uh, I, I'd have felt awkward uh, were I one of those individuals. Um, but I, I can also say, I think President Biden made an enormous error. He should have fought like crazy to keep this prosecution from going forward. Uh, it was a win-win for Donald Trump. If Donald Trump is exonerated... Is that, Don, is that Joe Biden's job, or is that the... It, let, shouldn't let there be a separation? You, I, I've been around for a while. If LBJ had been president and he didn't want something like this to happen, he'd have been all over that prosecutor saying, you better not bring that forward or I'm going to drive you out of office. But I'm pretty sure you support having separate but equal branches of government. I do, but I also... Let me tell you, I mean, you may disagree with this, but uh, had I been President Biden, uh, when the Justice Department brought out indictments, I would have immediately uh, uh, pardoned him. I'd have pardoned President Trump. Uh, why? Well, because it makes me, President Biden, the big guy and the person I pardoned the little guy. I, I am so confused, Stephanie, for a lot yeah, of reasons. Especially First wow. of all, Donald Trump hasn't admitted guilt. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, it's not 1965. Like, LBJ pressuring people to either prosecute or not prosecute, it's exactly what scares us about what Donald Trump's promising to do exactly in the next term. Window. So he's not any different than Donald Trump there saying as president, I would have pressured prosecutors. There's also the possibility that you pressure a prosecutor to drop a case, and the prosecutor says, screw you, making that prosecutor even more powerful. He's feeding into the lie, and I don't think he's attempting to feed into the lie here. The Fox News lie that a lot of Fox News primetime hosts spread, that this all was concocted by Joe Biden and could all be ended by Joe Biden. That's number one. I would love for you to talk about that. Number two, I'd also love to talk, have you talk about how Mitt Romney thinks that a guy who's a former president who stole nuclear secrets, who stole our secret invasion plans to Iran, which we may still have to do at some point, who stole some of the most uh, damning secrets about the United States regarding our defense weaknesses, and then lied about it to the FBI. FBI tries to get it back. Justice Department tries to get it back. Lies, lies. Then when that doesn't work, he goes to his IT person, pressures him to destroy the information, the IT person, the cameras, refuses to. <laughs> then he goes to his groundskeeper, says, can you flood out those rooms drain with all pool. of those documents? Drain the pool, according to testimony that we're going to be hearing. All of this massive cover-ups, obstruction of justice on top secret security issues, including nuclear secrets. Senator Romney agrees Romney, with everything you said. Yeah, but Mitt Romney just said... We should have just given him a free pass on all of that. Yes, he's saying we should just move on. We should be done with Donald Trump. And Mitt Romney is very clear he's not going to vote for Donald Trump. But it's very strange to see a U.S. senator, a former governor, who has spent decades of his life in our government, who deeply respects our government, uh, simply saying we should ignore the rule of law because all of this circus is good for Donald Trump politically. Donald Trump loves the pre free press, and it helps him. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan O'Meara, do you have a question? Or would you like to just scratch your head in utter befuddlement like the rest of us? <laughs> that would be fine. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's my instinct. I mean, it is so surprising for, Rom for Rom Senator Romney, who has stood up to Trump in so many ways. And, and he's and, not it, voting for him, and he makes not, it he's very not, clear. That, that, that is fine. But, and maybe he thinks he's putting country first. He's trying to be above partisanship to suggest that we should all move on and heal mm -hmm. as, a, as a nation. But that seems strikingly naive uh, for someone. We're talking about Donald Trump, who has, as Joe just said, made deeply clear what he will do if he's in office again. The things that, you're, that Romney says we should pardon and forget Trump is saying, I'm going to keep doing that and, and more. worse. And yes. it'd be that much more emboldened. I just am stunned for someone who has been one of the Republican Party's very few consistent Trump critics that he would go down this path. Okay, there's that unserious thing. And the other unserious thing is Mitt Romney still doesn't want to say who he's going to vote for. Remember, in the it's last two wife, elections, huh? he wrote in his wife's name. That's not a serious thing to do. And he laid out in our 25-minute conversation all the serious risks our country faces, yet he doesn't want to say what he's going to do. The interesting part is he said he doesn't want to publicly say 
because he doesn't want to lose the influence he has with his party, which begs the question, what is it that you're going to do next? So Senator let's bring Ryan. in more voices yeah. to this conversation. Uh, MSNBC political analyst and publisher of the newsletter The Inc., Anand Giridardis, the co-host of MSNBC's The Weekend and Morning Mika, Simone Sanders Townsend, and editor of The New Republic, Michael Tomaski, is with us. The publication is out with a special report for its June edition entitled American Fascism, What It Would Look, out, look Like and What Good Timing for that topic yeah it, it does um michael <laughs> yes sir <laughs> michael i mean yeah. i don't want to say is this how fascism wins is this but how fascism maybe you just rises? Ask. but but when you you have people saying oh we can't impeach him and then they go oh we can't prosecute him for the the stealing of nuclear secrets then the covering up of the stealing of nuclear secrets then the lying to the Justice Department about stealing nuclear secrets, and then the lying to the FBI about the stealing of nuclear secrets, and then the attempt to destroy cameras that show you stole nuclear secrets, then the attempt to flood the facilities to, 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 to hide the fact you stole nuclear secrets, and you've got Mitt Romney, who's supposed to be the paragon of virtue for the, the Republican Party, saying, eh, let him go. I mean, please, I mean, please. Where does this lead us as a nation? That is how fascism wins, Joe. And, and uh, as Jonathan Ouch. just said a couple minutes ago, you pair all of that, the past actions, with what he is plainly telling us he's going to do if he gets power again. You know, he hasn't made any secret of this. Uh, you know, Project 2025 spells it out very clearly. There have been many leaks to the New York Times and other publications from his people saying what they're going to do in terms of, for example, rounding up undocumented immigrants and so on. And then there's his own recent Time Magazine interview, that shocking interview just a couple weeks ago, where he said openly the things he is going to do. I guess some would dispute the term fascism. I sure don't. I know millions and millions of Americans don't. When he says, you know, the threat is internal and these people are vermin polluting our country, that's fascist rhetoric. There's no way around it. So what we've done, if I may just quickly plug, we have eight essays in our new issue uh, by some of the great historians of fascism in our country, Ruth ben Giat being one of them, and, uh, wow. and, and other pieces. Uh, Brian Stelter, formerly of CNN, did a fantastic, chilling piece on what might happen to the media. Just eight different articles looking at what this country might be like if he re reassumes power and has his way and does the things he and his people are telling us they're going to do. And by the way, Anna, uh, everything that they write about... <coughs> Donald Trump has already promised to do. Yeah. yeah, and I think what's really interesting is, thinking about this interview you did, is that a lot of the reaction to Trump is not about ideology, it's about personality type. And I think since 2015, he came down the elevator, there have been two dominant personalities we've seen processing him. One of clarity and one that is, has this kind of emotional need to pursue balance at any price. Right? You see it in the media and you see it in leaders. I think I, I look at someone like Romney there and it's this deep constitutional need to be balanced no matter what. And so, yes, he's a criminal, but he should be part. Anytime you say anything that acknowledges the reality of the danger, there's the, the, these people, and they're in our media. They run newspapers. But that's they run not constitutional balance. That's no, no, no. I don't mean I don't mean no, constitution I'm, like I'm the. I mean that, like inner constitution. Yes. Oh, okay. They people think that they think that's they're in their inner so constitution. It actually character. has nothing to do with what's happening. There's a certain so personality type is, that is very Mitt, dangerous Mitt, Mitt, for a moment Romney like this. Is thinking, this is better to balance my constitution than actually protect the, the constitution. constitution. That he almost has a need, and a lot of people do, and I think it has actually been one of the biggest problems in the media also processing Trumpism, where you have newspapers that are very used to covering normal two sides, low taxes, high taxes, big government, small government, but when it is, do we do democracy anymore or not, there's a there's this kind of both sidesing impulse and that to me was the political version of the both sidesing impulse and it's the wrong personality for if michael and the new republic is right that we are in this very different historical moment yeah. with fascism it is the wrong personality to protect the country in this time and it's absolutely right because in our conversation we talked about you know what would a second term look like for president biden you know or donald trump right the country is so polarized it's divided joe biden has actually gotten a ton done on a bi 
bipartisan it's basis. True. And I said, what would he need to do in the next term to try to really bring, you know, people together? And I said, and what would Trump do? And he said, obviously, Trump is not looking to unite the country. You know, he specializes in dividing it. And in it, he said, Joe Biden is a good guy. I like Joe Biden. And he didn't say that about Donald Trump. So I asked huh. him about that. And immediately he needed to equate things. He wasn't going to say, I like Donald Trump. He's a good guy. He said, well, he's a laugh riot. He's really funny. Oh. And I'm like, really? Like what? that? Because he had to create yeah. an equivalency. Well, the riot part so, is true. Yeah. There, <laughs> there you go. So. You, know, you know, actually, Mussolini played the cat skills in the team. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people right. don't know that. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the thing is, though, there is always this equivalency. And you would see it. I saw it the first time. And the National Review where somebody said, yes, January 6th was bad. Right. But did you see what Donald, what, what Joe Biden did with student loans? Right. Yes. And they continued yes. that argument. That so because, similar, those two be, things. Because he tried to use, uh, use his presidential authority to forgive student loans, which, by the way, provided a check. And the Supreme Court came back and said, no, too much. You're going to have to figure out a more tailored way to do that. But you will still hear, and John Meacham always laughs about it in a sort of gallows humor way, that he will talk to top Republicans who will still say, yeah. oh, you talk about January 6th. Did you see what Joe Biden tried to do? On student loans. Can, can I just and make one point about the student loans? Serious. So, so real yeah, no, but, I, I want to get to I mean, okay. you, No, no, you go ahead. But really, the, we, we don't have to even talk about this because people didn't die because of the student loans. There was a balance, a check on power because Joe Biden plays within the guardrails, the constitutional guardrails. Okay, right. but on student loans, because Mitt Romney really went off on student loans, how terrible it was, and that's buying votes. Let's even assume it is. Let's give him that, that point. Great. What, what, what do you think? Uh, uh, the carried interest loophole is buying votes. What do you think President, excuse me, former President Trump meeting with oil executives at Mar-a-Lago last week and trying to get a billion dollars out of them and saying, I'll make you a deal. What do you think that deal is? Buying votes. So to say, like, look at Joe Biden buying votes and for, by you the know, way, for giving students. Why doesn't Mitt Romney talk about the fact that after bailouts he for passed companies. the largest tax cut in the in world history, not American history, for billionaires and multinational corporations, Donald Trump flew on Air Force One from Washington, D.C. to Mar-a-Lago. He sat around a table with billionaires. And what did he say? I just made all of you a lot richer today.